Hello! Over the last couple of videos, we've been dealing with planes, and in this final video, I'd like to sum up all of the work we've done to finally reach our goal, which is finding the algebraic equation for a plane. So in the first video, we looked at how, you know, a plane can be defined with three points. These three here I'm choosing. I believe this, this one we chose to be our origin point for what we were doing. We made that x0, y0, z0 in space. That's its coordinate. And we figured out that instead of defining a plane with points, we could work on defining it with vectors. And to do that, what we did is we made, and I might have the order a little bit wonky here, we turned these three points into a series of vectors that connected them. And lastly, we determined that we could define our plane with a normal vector a vector that sticks outward from the plane at 90 degrees. And that vector we called C. So we found vector C by taking the cross product between the two vectors that we defined before, which I believe were, and I might have the colors wrong, but that's not really important, A and B. And in the last video, we actually calculated that cross product to find C, because C is another way of representing our plane. C defines the plane just like the other three points. As we talked about in the second video, a normal vector can define a plane just like three points can, and all it has to do is be perpendicular. So we found C, where we calculated C, but it was pretty complex, so we summarized it to be, and this is a vector, AI plus B, and then the little, uh, these are unit vectors here, and then this is another C that's not the same C. It's just a constant. Those are all constants, A, B, and C. And then those are the unit vectors in which direction C goes in. So that's our C, right? That's the normal vector of the plane. So how exactly do we use that to find the equation of a plane? Because I've, built, I've been building up these vectors, like, you know, they're super important in defining planes. But why not just work with the three points we started with instead of going through all the nonsense of, you know, taking the cross product of vectors and stuff, because that seems more complex, right? Well, actually, not the cross product, but another property of vectors we can use to turn our C that we calculated using the cross product and our other two vectors that we found based on those original three points, we can actually use that to get the equation of a plane. So how, do we exact, how exactly do we do that? I'm going to define one more point here. And, you know, you might think, oh, that's not fair, four points. Well, stay with me. I'm going to find this point. I'm going to make this point a different color. I'm not quite sure what color since I've already used so many. Uh, yellow wouldn't look very good. I'll just make it red again, but I'll make it larger. This is our new point. Oh, actually, pink. Let's do pink. It's kind of a, well, no, we already have pink. Dark purple. There we go. Finally, deciding colors is the hardest part. And this point, I'm going to call x, y, z, because this is an arbitrary point. It's any point on the plane at all. And x and y and z are the coordinates of that point that's on the plane. The important part is that it's on the plane. It could be over here, could be over here, doesn't matter. It's at x, y, z. I'm just putting it there so that it's visually clear. Now we can find the vector from our origin to that point, and I'm going to call this D. This is vector D. What is vector D going to be equal to? Vector D, well, it's just going to be the difference between the points, right? So that's going to be x minus x0 in the x direction plus y minus y0 in the j direction plus z minus z0 in the z direction. And that's all those unit vectors mean. And notice, we actually have variables in this vector, right? x, y, and z could be anywhere. We know where x0 and x, y, I mean, and sorry, x0, y0, and z0 are because we have that point. That's a point that we start with. But we don't know where x, y, and z are. Those are our variables that we're eventually going to have in our equation. But this still isn't the equation of a plane, certainly. This is just a vector. Now, 
is when C comes in because vector C is very important because it's perpendicular to the plane. That means it's perpendicular to every single vector inside the plane, including vector D. So vector C is going to be perpendicular to vector C. And what do we know about the cross product? If we take the cross product between, and I'm, I'm going to make, I mean, sorry, not cross product, the dot product, sorry, that's very important. If we take the dot product, we already took the cross product. If we take the dot product between two perpendicular vectors, C and D, any two perpendicular vectors, when you take the dot product, you're going to get zero. Because the dot product does not produce a vector. That's These are just vector properties. A dot product does not produce a vector. It produces a scalar. It produces a value. And that value, when those two vectors are perpendicular, is always going to be zero because you know a dot product is really multiplying the parts of the vectors that are in the same direction. And when two vectors are perpendicular, no part of them is in the same direction. So C dotted with D is going to be equal to zero. Hey, that's starting to look neat. So let's bring C down. We know that C is equal to A I. This is, this is all just review. This is just what C is. There we go. If we take the dot product, this is going to be equal to zero. So zero is equal to how do you take the dot product, right? The dot product, it's important to know how to take the dot product. Hopefully you already know, but just as a review, when you take the dot product, when you have a matrix like that, well, not a matrix, but a vector, you can do it with matrices too, uh, like this, all you do is you multiply the corresponding terms that are in the same directions. So, you know, our A goes with the X minus X zero, the B multiplies by the Y minus Y zero, and the C multiplies by the Z, Z minus Z zero. Just the corresponding components of the vector are multiplied by each other. So we have that zero is going to be equal to, and the unit vectors disappear because the dot product does not produce a vector, it produces a scalar. So we are going to have a times x minus x zero plus b times y minus y zero plus let me make sure I actually get the right colors here not to not confuse people c times z minus z zero now isn't that neat look what we've done here let's let's rearrange this slightly I'm gonna get rid of all the colors we have that a which is a constant times x minus x zero plus b times y minus y zero plus c times z minus z zero is equal to zero. Notice a, b, and c are constants. x zero, y zero, and z zero are constants. We know x0, y0, and z0, and we can calculate a, b, and c based on original three points. That's this point, this point, and this point. That, that's what we did in the last video. We essentially calculated a, b, and c, and I just simplified to make it a, b, and c instead of writing everything out in terms of these and the other points because a, b, and c is easier to work with and a little bit easier to express here. So really... We can determine everything, every single term in that in this equation here, except x, y, and z based on our original three points. This is the equation of a plane. This is the standard equation of a plane. All you need to do is calculate a, b, and c, and know your and know that first point that you're working off of. And you do that just by knowing those three points. We took three points in the plane, and we found the equation of a plane. I could, you know, instead of a, b, and c, I could add in all the points and how they're multiplied together, but there's no point in that. I hope that this is somewhat revealing and certainly interesting. I really, I really love this stuff. And uh, if you find a 3D grapher online, I recommend trying it. Uh, but this looks actually quite a, quite a bit like the original equation we thought maybe the equation of a plane would look like. 
AX plus BY plus CZ equals a constant, that's actually pretty similar because if we take into account these on the inside, that's exactly what we have. We just need to do some algebraic manipulation. So in the next video, I'm going to be doing an example with this so that if any of this wasn't clear from more of a mathematical theoretical standpoint, in practice, maybe uh, some things will reveal themselves. I hope that this was interesting and that you enjoyed it, and I will see you all in the next video. There's the standard equation of a plane.